why are some illustrations just so engaging? Like the whole world is painted inside of it, and we can literally feel the emotion of the characters, and sometimes even our own presence in the painting. I'm just so inspired by painting like these, and I always wish that my drawings can communicate more effectively with my viewers as well. But for a long period of time, my drawings are stiff and motionless. Is it that I just don't have it in me? Is it that the pro artists just have some kind of magical talent? But fear not, my friend. That's a problem of the past. Hey, yeah, I'm Table Fork. Welcome back to Painting Labo. So in this video, I'm gonna introduce three principles that can help us make our story more engaging, which is value hierarchy, the group of three, and noise control. And at the end of the video, I'll briefly go through how we can use these principles to enhance our own story. Before getting into the nitty gritty, let's do a small demonstration to see how effective they can be. So I made two paintings, one applied the principles and the other one did not. Oh, Asha! Hey ya! Oh, hi, Fork! Asha, Asha, I'm demonstrating the differences between the two drawings. Oh, sure. So here's drawing A. Asha, what is capturing your attention? Hmm. I see that there's a light source from the top right direction highlighting all the characters. And every character in this drawing is capturing my attention. Like the two people chatting, the poster in the back, and the foreground. Mm-hmm. Arigato, Asha. Let's move on to the second drawing then. Can you tell the difference? Oh, my focus just go right into the characters in the midground this time. Then wandering from there to see what else is around. Hmm. Now let's put the two drawings together. Hmm, interesting. It's literally the same drawing, but I guess the difference is that drawing B is darker and so there isn't much light for each character. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's one of the reasons why we tend to look at the pair in the drawing B. The main difference is that B has a focal point and A does not. The focal point is basically the area that captures the viewer's attention. So just like in this demo, a focal point can completely change the entire drawing story. Now, let's talk about the three principles on how to craft and bring out the focal point. First, let's talk about this concept of value hierarchy. In simple terms, value or brightness is the black and white of the painting. When analyzing the drawing, we can analyze it simpler by turning it into black and white. So let's turn this into black and white as well. And let's simplify it further by turning both drawings into black and white matrices. So how is the value hierarchy applied? Our brain loves simple patterns, or what we call unity, because it makes things predictable and comfortable. But when things are too calming, we tend to ignore them. And in visual art, using only unity will make our drawing dull and boring to look at. And that's why we add noise in it to capture the viewer's attention, so that our brain will find the piece interesting and not boring. And this applies to black and white as well. Let's look at the matrices again. For painting A, the entire painting has similar value. Everything looks united, there's just no focus. But for painting B, the foreground is grouped in dark grays, as in they all have similar value range. That's how we help the viewers to organize information in digestible chunks. Then by introducing more noise in the main focal point, it helps capture the viewer's attention. So, takeaway number one is to group things that are not that important together, so it brings out the focal point. Oh, I understand now. Does this also apply to white background plus black focal point as well? Yes, it does. You mean like this drawing that I did? Yeah, but is there any particular rules to group them? Good question. Before I answer Asha's question, if you're enjoying our video so far, please don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out the next video. Aha! One of the most common ways is to group everything into three. Here you can see that the grey background takes more than half of the drawing, and the dark grey takes around 30% of the drawing. And the main character group, which uses both the brightest white and the darkest black, only takes a small proportion of the drawing. So, to summarize, a fuzzy rule of thumb is to have more than 50% as the background, then have around 20-30% to as the secondary, and the rest of the 10 to 20% as the focal point. But we can always get more creative about this. That makes so much sense now. But what if I want to make my drawings look even more interesting, like using a lot of values? No problem. We can always add more value while keeping the three groups. Let's talk about noise control. 
we can add values by breaking the free groups into smaller chunks, like this. But we can also control how many chunks we're going to break it into. More chunks means more variety, meaning that it's going to capture more attention. So to demonstrate, let's look at a session from the 50% background group and a session from the 20% focal point group. Actually, the three visual groups are further divided into smaller chunks. So within each group, there's the mid-tone, the core shadow, and the occlusional shadow, aka lines. So if I want to further highlight the focal point, we can always add more variety into it, right? Here, I'm adding more resolution, or chunks into the focal point's core shadow. This is what artists are actually doing when they are trying to add more details, and it doesn't break the group of three. So in comparison, the background and the secondary group will have less chunks so it will appear more flat and united. Wow, this is very useful. I'm going to use it in my drawings right now. Wait, Asha, one last thing, one last thing. Let me share with you some simple traits so you can quickly adjust your art. A quick and easy way is to use the level control or tone curve adjustment settings. So after you selected the group, you can darken or lighten the value by playing with the curves. But I won't get into too much details now because it's already a very long video and there's a lot of information to take in already. So here's the summary page for the three principles that I just talked about. They're really powerful tools that we can use to design and highlight our focal point and tell a better story. So thanks for sticking to the end! If you enjoyed our content, make sure to like and subscribe. If you're also interested in learning about color and lighting in a more scientific way, make sure to check out Asha's video where she talked about three ways to analyze color and lighting. See you next time! Huh? Asha? Asha? Huh? What? Asha was here just now? Huh? Huh? She already went into practice. Oops.